Thank you for viewing this video on Sharp Safety. We've introduced these modules as part of our compliance with the Health and Safety Sharp Instruments and Healthcare Regulations 2013. The aim of these series of modules is to provide you with information on how to use Sharp safely, how to dispose of them, and ultimately to give you some advice on specific devices that are in use within NHS Fife. This is the first module which covers assembly and use of sharp bins uh, and also covers what to do in the event of a sharps incident. There are further videos covering separate devices which you can view after you've seen this particular video. This is a typical sharps bin. Uh, there are various models available obviously throughout the NHS but they all work in a very similar principle. Uh, key point with assembly is when you're putting the lid on is to make sure that the lid is locked in place securely uh, and a good point of practice is to make sure you press it down at all four corners so that it's properly locked and then you can check just give the lid a gentle tug to make sure that it's fixed in place. When you're assembling please make sure that you complete the assembly label so that we can see uh, where the bin has been assembled uh, and by whom and on which date. has been filled in with the details of where it's been uh, assembled and by who. Key points when you're using sharp bins is obviously to use a temporary closure. Uh, when the bin is not in use, if it's being transported, then that simply locks in place just with a simple click at the front uh, and then be reopened when you want to use the bin in practice. We also want to make sure that sharp bins are used as close as possible to the point of use uh, and we have this particular system with a tray uh, which is available to allow that to be used at the point of use with the patient uh, and there's somewhere to store your sharps and other bits and pieces before they're used. Key points obviously with the sharp bins are the fill line. Um, sharp bins mustn't be filled beyond that line. Uh, when it is full, then we want to make sure that the final closure is put in place and that's done simply by pushing the lid securely down until it locks into place. Once a bin has been locked uh, and fully closed, make sure that you fill in the closure details uh, and also put on the tag uh, to indicate where the bin has come from and then dispose of it according to local practices. That's all in terms of sharps bins. Um, in terms of sharps incidents, uh, key point to remember is for you to understand what to do in the event of a sharps injury. We do have a leaflet that is available on the health and safety pages of the NHS 5 intranet and I would encourage you to download and have a read of that. But it does have information as to what to do in the event of a sharps incident. Make sure that you perform appropriate first aid. Keep calm. If your skin is punctured, gently encourage the wound to bleed, but don't suck the wound. Thoroughly wash the wound with soap and water, but don't scrub it. If your eyes or mouth are involved in, in the incident, irrigate them with copious quantities of water, but don't swallow it. Cover the wound with a waterproof dressing. Take a note of where and or on whom the blood or body fluid came and what exact circumstances you were in when you were exposed. Make sure that you inform your line manager or supervisor that you have had an injury and then contact the occupational health department or the emergency department as soon as possible after the incident. If you're going to emergency department, please also make sure that you contact occupational health as soon as possible after any, under any assessment undertaken by ED.